from postmodernism to transmodernism, a message in a telematic bottle. Most of us are familiar with the phenomenon of postmodernism. Postmodernism, as the term tells us, follows from modernism or modernity. However, today we have moved forward. We have stepped into what we might call post postmodernism, or what deserves perhaps to be called, what even begs to be called, transmodernism. Well, a few thoughts about this phenomenon, how we got here, where we're going, and really, where are we now? What is really going on? Well, let us begin from modernism, modernity, which is somewhat synonymous with progress, the idea of progress. Now, modernity is a movement that begins, that stems from this notion that we can transcend the condition of all prior peoples. Problems that had been left unsolved in prior ages are now seen as susceptible to being solved once and for all. When? How? Well, perhaps finally in an indefinite future, nevertheless, in the future. Not in eternity, but somewhere in the future. So we look forward, and how? Through a new type of life that is guided by a new type of reason. This reason we can call, and deserves to be called, a mechanical reason of reason that can be shared by everyone independently of whether they are good or evil. Anybody, even devils, can be now rational in the modern sense of the term. So we're here to build machines that will help us move forward, resolve old problems more and more, if not today, if not tomorrow, later. And so we're moving forward, we're leaving the past behind, the old recedes, the new is praised. It is at least a promise of an approach toward a complete final resolution. That resolution will be the apotheosis of modern reason. And we see this in authors such as Hegel, who is proclaiming the rise of reason with a capital R as the queen of history of this whole movement forward. Now, if Hegel announces, proclaims the apotheosis of reason, how is it that we move from modernity to postmodernity? Reason, standing lofty at the end of history of this movement that, that tends toward the solution to all previous problems. What are the fundamental problems of man, the ones that have been left unresolved? Well, problems of injustice, problem of death, the problem of a gap between our condition, our human condition, and the perfection of being, God. The rise of reason in Hegel coincides with the awakening of spirit, Geist in German, as the ruler of the world. Geist is the self-realization, one could say, of man, but also of God. So that would seem to be the final answer to everything, to all of our troubles. And yet we move into, immediately almost, into a dark side of that new revelation, the new disclosure of reason. 
And the dark side, the Dionysian side of the Apollonian Hegel, is represented most notably by Nietzsche. Nietzsche tells us that at the end of history stands unreason, not reason, but the absurd, the abyss. And this is the core of postmodernism. Yes, there is truth, but truth is irrational. So this is the final disclosure. The irrational is the final, consummate, ultimate truth, the destruction of reason. All right, one might say, what do we do with that? Well, Nietzsche is a very positive person, and so he would tell you that in the face of the absurd, your true nature is unleashed. You are free. Now we can express, we can incarnate the absurd. Now we can be absolutely, absolutely creative. We can go out there and express the creativity of the universe. Express the creativity that stems from the bottom the bottomless bottom of the abyss. Nothing can hold us back. All right, so what do we do with that? Well, now we go out and are super creative. Everyone is creative. Everyone has truth, is a repository of truth. Everyone expresses truth because truth is in the expression, expressivism expressionism. Fine. So this would seem to be the final answer. Everybody's free. Everybody can express the absolute being also the absolute absence of reason, of order. Order is established as the expression of chaos, of disorder, of absence of order. Fundamentally, there is no order. But we can establish nuclei, centers of order, little orders all over the place out of the absence of order. Creativity unleashed. Unprecedented phenomena. All right. So postmodernism is the end of the road. This is where we all end up. We're all free. We're all expressive of the absolute. We're all self-realized. And yet, and this is not something that Nietzsche had foreseen, not that we can tell, we move into a post-postmodernism today. What is that? What is it that here we're calling transmodernism? Well, it is not too difficult to see how this phenomenon is disclosed. In the face of this irrational, radically irrational, meaningless creation of meaning, of reason, as order, that we are fated to, we see our condition. We are not entirely within it. By nature, and perhaps Nietzsche had underestimated our human nature, we naturally step out of the scene. We step out of our character, our role, even if this role is supposed to be utterly disconnected from bonds, from ties, uh, utterly free. And in fact, the expression of the essence of freedom itself, absolute freedom. We step out and we see our condition. And what do we see? We see ourselves as these social atoms, these individuals who are supposed to express the abyss. But these 
individuals now, as we come out, step out of our role, we see this individual that I am, I, the ego, and I see it. We see ourselves lost in the abyss. Well, we are supposed to express that abyss, but the vision of ourselves lost in space, lost in meaninglessness, is unbearable. All right, well, Nietzsche had already foreseen that most people would be sheep and follow and uh, could not sustain the life of the of the superman, of the overman, of the superhero of creativity. Nevertheless, what we have today is crowds of people who are supposed to be embracing this challenge of freedom. They don't want to be sheep. They want to be free. Everybody's out there with his phone, with his little selfie and machine, and, and everybody's expressive and TikTok and whatnot, and all these little applications on these machines that we are given by the regime. Um, we're all supposed to be expressive of the absolute. So we don't like the idea of being sheep. So let us bracket that Nietzschean distinction between the superhero and the masses, the crowds of sheep. So what do we do? And why do we enter into this transmodernism? Well, we step out of our superhero condition. We recognize ourselves as idiots, quite frankly, as lost souls, as, in fact, pieces of meat. Pieces of meat? But aren't we supposed to express absolute freedom? The problem is that the hiatus between the piece of meat and the abyss is the object of our vision. In pulling ourselves out of that role of the, the individual, we see that that superhero is just a piece of meat in a universe that is meaningless, and it's not going anywhere. So the meaninglessness of the universe is somehow mirrored in the meaninglessness of an individual that is really deluded. The superhero is a fantasy. As we see, if only in the back of our minds, as it were, as we gain a sense of the futility of this daily, continual, in fact, creative act that is not going anywhere, what happens? Well, we seek to go further. But where do we go from there? Well, if this creativity is no longer bearable, because it is not going anywhere, there is no God to return to. There is no return. This we have accepted from early postmodernism, from Modernity itself told us that there is no return. What do we do? If our new postmodern freedom is unbearable, what do we do? We have stepped out. We have seen ourselves as idiots, lost in a meaningless universe. We accept that condition. But that is not enough. That too is unbearable. Seeing ourselves as pieces of meat, that too is inadequate. 
we must seek salvation from that condition. Now, it is true that we have accepted that we can create. So what can we create? We can create something that will save us from our condition, from our delusion, from our conditions, pieces of meat, biological mechanisms, in fact, that are somehow generating the delusion of consciousness, of awakening, of uniqueness, of meaning. So we know that meaning is just an illusion that is projected by the mechanisms. Fine, we know. So we can at least create something that will save us from this delusion and from this dreadful vision of ourselves as pieces of meat. What can do that? Well, the good answer, the wonderful answer, the grotesque answer is technology. Of course, we have invented, we all work together towards the establishment of a machine that will give a sense to ourselves as pieces of meat. It will make our condition as pieces of meat bearable. How can it do that? Very simple. By remolding the piece of meat all the time. So we're not stuck. We have invented, we are giving ourselves to the establishment of a machine that can continually, continuously remold us as pieces of meat modify us, and so diversify. We're no longer stuck in the piece of meat as a stale, rotting, static piece of meat. The piece of meat now is dynamic. It can transcend itself through the machine. The transcending of the meat is coming about through the remolding of the machine the remolding by the machine of the piece of meat. And so, the Deus Ex Machina, the God as a machine, that comes along, we have given our lives to create this machine that comes back to us and tells us, you know, it's fine that uh, you're a piece of meat. You don't even have to bother creating the illusion of meaning. The machine gives it to you. We have films that feed us our dreams. We don't need to dream anymore. Children should not even dream. Don't give them the, the, the space to dream because we have the computers that and these games that sell them, that saturate their minds with these technological dreams. So they don't need to dream anymore. We don't need to create meaning out of no meaning. That's a burden especially when we have already stepped out and seen ourselves as idiots. So, what do we do today? We are pieces of meat that are continuously remolded by the machine. We go to the surgeons and they will change our parts. They will remold our being, which we have accepted to be a piece of meat. Now, is that the end of the story? Well, we have, our, we have reduced ourselves, and this is what transmodernism really amounts to, to absolute slaves. We have created our master, the machine, that will finally enslave us. And in that slavery, in that enslavement, we envision, we seek, we find our salvation. What is the alternative? Is there an alternative? Well, there is, very simply, an alternative for those who do not accept the game. For those who don't, there is the alternative of letting go. Letting go of this nonsense about seeing ourselves as pieces of meat in the void, in a meaningless universe, there is a letting go of the sphere, the fear 
of the meaninglessness of life. There is this openness in trust, in faith, fetus, to what is on the other side of meaninglessness. There is a great challenge to heed once again what was said before we began on this journey of modernity, this journey of progressivism, this journey of the apotheosis that leads to the apotheosis of reason, which we have seen turns out to be none other than the apotheosis of unreason. Reason stands great, majestic, and re recognizes that it doesn't mean anything. The modern mechanical reason. It explodes. All right? We have that possibility. It's before all of us. Yet, let's just be serious, very few people will take that path. Most of us will remain pieces of meat, continually manipulated, remolded by the machine. This is a situation that we have today, that we face today, and children face it. Children are right there, the target, the primary target of the machine that we have been building for quite a while. So we have clinics, factories, schools, all kinds of institutions that are geared precisely to the establishment of this view that we are pieces of meat and that we ought to, to be integrated into the machine just as these old uh, sneeches uh, by Dr. Seuss who go into the machine to get their little stars, the stars on their bellies, either erased or added. So the machine will secure our identity, our identity that is dynamic, always changing, always new. And there, even the news, this machinery of the latest shocking news, this, of course, feeds into this, this process. We are this process. We are meat being processed by the machine. Well, most of us will have to accept that, uh, that, that, that situation. A few of us won't. And it is to those few that these words are dedicated.